Hey, let's all stand up. We've been sitting down for a long time. Let's all stand up. Shake it out a little bit. Shake it out. Shake your legs out. Feel good. Now, I want to tell you guys something. Just by being here today, you're part of a fantastic few and not the desperate many. And here's what I mean by that. I mean that uh, there's a real estate hunger games have begun in our industry. Here's what it is. Let's just check it out. <laughs> there you go. I love it. You should do a whistle. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Good job. So the real, you guys can sit down. The hun real estate hunger games is this. Uh, in tw 2005, there was about 4.5 million, excuse me, 2012, excuse me. 2012, there was 4.5 million transactions closed in the country. And guess how many realtors we had at that time? We had about a million realtors in the country at that time. This year, we're going to close about 4.5 million transactions, give or take. Guess how many realtors are in the country today? 1.6 million. 60% increase the number of realtors, same number of transactions. The people like you that have invested in education and you spent your $79 or whatever the number was, but it's far greater than that because you spent your time here today. And let me, let's just think about this. If you're all making $100,000 or $200,000 a year and we just spent eight hours together, I'm guaranteeing you that that adds up to millions of dollars invested in education right here today. Isn't that great? It's great. Clap your hands. That's good. It's good news. And if you haven't done it yet, take your phone out and take a picture that you're at this conference. And let everybody know at home, all your sphere of influence people, hey, you know what? I invested in myself in my education because I want to do a better job for my clients this year. By the way, who do you know that's thinking about buying or selling? If you haven't done it, you got to do it. You got to make it happen. I'm going to be talking today about the seven strategies to fill your listing pipeline. Here's our challenge today. The challenge in our market today is not interest rates. Get over that. It's not interest rates. How many of you are working with a buyer today and you cannot find them a listing to buy? Look around the room. We don't have an interest rate problem, although it's a challenge. It's a challenge, not a problem. What we have is an inventory problem. There's 25% listings being taken today than where you're at the same time. We've got to figure out how can we get these sellers off the fence and into the market. Say yes. yes. Well, that was a week. <laughs> Say yes. yes. Yeah. We've got to get these guys off the market and in, or off the fence and into the market. So I'm going to give you just really nuts and bolts out of you guys. I come from a market that's not unlike Columbia here. My population base is 80,000, and my office did $1.4 billion in sales last year with 200 agents. So you can do the math, but we have one of the highest per agent productivity rates in the country. One of the top 500 companies in the country, and we're competing with companies in LA and Chicago and Atlanta and all the big cities in the country, New York City. And how are we doing it? We're doing it by implementing nuts and bolts strategies that all of you guys can implement, even in the small towns where you're working, okay? So let me see if I get this to work. Here we go. So let's just ask ourselves, and don't say it out loud, but who is your number one competitor in your market? Just think about the name, the company name, okay? We all have it in our mind. Don't groan when I put these, these brands up here. I couldn't fit every brand in America on here, so don't groan when I put them up here. Okay, maybe it's Rematch, maybe it's Hollow Banker, Century One, EXP, Keller Williams, Compass, and a million other companies out there in my market. I've got uh, regional companies, we got independent companies. I know there's a ton of regionals and independents here. But when we look at this list, we can probably think, yeah, there's one of these companies out here that I'm really competing with to try to get listings. And they're beating me a lot, right? But I would tell you that all of you that thought of a name or a company brand name are absolutely probably wrong. See, the number one competitor, in my opinion, in every market in the country, and the guys that's forming Garrett and Tyler hit on it, the number one competitor in our country is Zillow. And here's what's happening, guys. You gotta think about this. They're not winning just market share, they're winning far, something far more important. They're winning mind share. You see, here's what's, their, their goal is this. Their goal is when somebody hears the words real estate at home and they say, you know what, I'm thinking about selling our house. Or I'm thinking about uh, buying a house. Or I drove by an open house this morning. I drove by a listing and I'm curious about it. What's the first thing they do? Because they've been triggered, they've been trained. What are they gonna do? A lot of them are going to go on to Zillow. And when they start typing on Zillow, they come up with a result, they're being prompted to fill out a form. What happens with that form? That form is being sold to sucker realtors across the country. Hopefully none of you are buying those leads. I hope you're not. I know some of you are. It's okay. But what happens is that lead then flows to an office that's paid for it, an agent that's paid for it, that agent takes a listing, and you say, geez, I lost the listing to this company. You didn't lose the listing to that company. Who'd you lose the listing to? Say it out loud. Zillow. 
So what do we have to do about this? What can we do about this to change the trend, to change the direction, and take control of lead generation? And it's certainly not buying leads from our enemy. This is an enemy of the state for us. We're not buying leads from our enemies. We are creating leads and not renting leads, as Garrett pointed out, which I thought was brilliant. So here's how we can win, and we can win mind share. We can do something that that billion dollar company cannot do. We can absolutely dominate in our local markets, and here's what we can do. You can win by having a personal relationship with people and a deep connection in the community. Zillow simply can't do that at scale. They can't do it. You can do it one by one, client by client, with your community and with the people in your databases. So let's look at this. If we open up the hood of all of your businesses today, we just looked under the hood and we said, what does your business look like? If I'm coaching you, this is the first thing I do, first coaching session, we look under the hood and we say, what's your business look like? I would say, how many people are in your sphere of influence? And you'd tell me a number, and from that number, I would tell you how many transactions you're likely to close in the next 12 months statistically. And here's the numbers. For every 10 people in your database, on average, if you're doing your job correctly, you're gonna close one transaction. So you guys can do the math of your own database right now. You can say, I have 100 people in my database, how many transactions am I gonna close? Likely, 10. If I have a 200 person database, it's gonna be 20. Now, people like Gary, that are just absolute rock stars, push that number obviously much higher than that. But statistically across the country, we're measuring every age in the country, that's the numbers, okay? So if I'm opening up the hood of your business, I look inside and you say, I have a 100 person database, and then I say, and how many transactions do you wanna close this year? And you say, I wanna close 30, do those numbers add up? See, so you want Ferrari-like performance, but you're driving around in this tin truck. <laughs> it just doesn't add up. You got a problem here. You're gonna have to fix your problem. And the first thing you have to do is understand that this is a numbers game. I've got to get enough people in my database to fix this problem so you all have a gap. And you have to fill the gap to make it work, right? And then you're gonna have to make sure that you are contacting these people consistently. Now, we're not just gonna talk theory today. I'm gonna give you nuts and bolts exact strategies today of what exactly to do, but let me just start with this one-a-day strategy, okay? To add 22 transactions to your bottom line this year. Here's something that's gonna blow your mind. The average American, how many conversations do you think the average American has? Not realtors, the average American has every single day. What would be your guess? Throw out a number. 12. 12, give me another number, higher. 15. Higher. 15. Not 50, lower. <laughs> 27 transactions, or transactions, 27 conversations. The average American has 27 conversations a day. Now, should a realtor be having more than that? Yes, right? Some of you are having far fewer than that, which is problematic. But let's start with that 27 transactions, uh, 27 conversations a day, if you want to say transactions. If we just say to ourselves, out of those 27 conversations I'm having every day, if I can convert one of those, just one, just one into somebody that's now in my database, what would happen to my productivity over the course of the year? There's 220 working days in the year. You take out Christmas and holidays and weekends, 220 working days. I'm adding one person a day, not five, not 10, not 20, not 100. I'm being consistent, and I'm adding one person a day to my database. Over the course of the year, going from ground zero, zero, I'm gonna add how many people? 220. End of this year, I'll have 220. With my 10 to one ratio, how many transactions have I added to my bottom line? 22. It's not rocket science, it's simply consistency. Now, I'm gonna give you a little fun thing we're gonna do at your tables here. And this is something you can do with everybody that you meet and they'll love it. And I want you to watch, when you're doing this with a person sitting next to you, you're gonna role play this. I want you to watch their face and I want you to watch their eyes while it's happening. You're gonna ask them this question. Hey, I'm curious, if you could live anywhere in any kind of home, what does that look like for you? Don't read the bottom, just look at the top. I'm curious if you can live anywhere, in any kind of home, what does that look like for you? Ask the question of your neighbor and look at their face while you're doing. More talking. Okay, everybody got an answer, right? All right, here we go. So when we looked at the person's face, for most people, when you're studying their face, when they're getting asked this question, their eyes go up and to the left. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, see, yes, a lot of that right there. Up and to the left. Why are people's eyes going up and to the left when you ask them that question? First of all, doesn't, do you, don't most people pause 
and they think, eyes go up and left, what they're accessing is a part of their brain, it's the aspirational part of their brain, it's the dream center, where they're going to a place that's not in this reality, but it's in a reality that looks much better than where they're at right now. And you just then got an answer, right? They all said the answer that we, we wanted, that dream, that aspirational goal that we have. You follow it up and say, hey, one thing I do for a lot of my clients is create a dream search. I plug it in to my website. I know you're not maybe in the market now, but it's just kind of fun. If anything pops up that's a match, the system will automatically send it to you. Does that sound okay? People say, yes, that sounds fun. It sounds great. It's kind of like a gamification real estate a little bit. One of my uh, coaching students, Mandy, did this. And uh, she was, did this at her dentist, and she's like, yeah, and they're getting into conversations. She asks the dentist questions. He tells her the dream search. She goes back, plugs it in, and actually CCs herself on every, every match that comes up. A match comes up. It's also going to the dentist, but she sees it. She says, oh, that's a really good match. I'm going to text my dentist. I'm going to tell him about it. She says, hey, the, your dream house actually came up for sale this morning. He says, that's really interesting. We are just think, talking about our conversation. Send it to me. Long story short, she sells him a house, lists the house, his house, and sells that house. 1.6 million in transactions, just from that simple conversation. But the bottom line here is just adding people to your database, starting to think about getting them into conversations that lead to some more uh, transactions. How to build relationships. I'm going to talk to you about the relationships you have in your database right now. Uh, Garrett and all the whole crew, all the speakers are amazing today. I, I wrote, I think, 25 pages of notes. But one of the things that uh, they brought up was this idea of, you know, syncing up with your, with your clients. And we use an actual specific strategy for it. We call it our one to five ratio strategy. And I just want you to remember these things as I'm speaking. Every single day at the top of your to-do list, here's what you're going to do. You're going to write down, I'm going to go big and go small. Every day you're going to go big and you're going to go small. Every day you're going to go big and you're going to go small. Here's what that looks like. You're gonna do one big thing daily, so you're touching your entire database daily doing one big thing. Here's what it could be. It could be social media, right? One of my friends, uh, Cindy Williams here, who's a fantastic realtor, joined me uh, 10 years ago, and she's just crushing it, putting out videos all the time, really authentic to who she is and how she operates her business. She's showing what she enjoys, uh, just kind of stripping away, not just things about real estate, but what, who she is as a person. Uh, she just uh, started playing pickleball, won her first tournament playing pickleball. She's out, she's videoing, she's being really consistent with it. That's going big. She's doing one social media post nearly every day, okay? Uh, here's another thing you could do, it's an email newsletter. How many people in this room are sending out an email newsletter every single month? Look around the room. You might have maybe, maybe 5% of this population base right here in this room is doing it. One of my good friends, uh, by the way, for those of you that say it's too much money, you can't afford it, no, no, it's not. It's so cheap to do an email newsletter. That's one of the easiest ways to touch your database. So when we talk about doing an ask for business, you want to do your asks in the go big section. You do your asks, you can do that in your email newsletter so it doesn't feel awkward. You can do your asks in video so it doesn't feel awkward. You can do your asks, I'm about to talk about bulk mailing so it doesn't feel awkward. Then when you're having your go smalls, you don't have to do the asks because you've already done that scale, okay? Uh, but send in blue, it's free. It's a free way to send out an email newsletter. Send in blue. Yeah, there's paid versions of it. Constant contact, there's MailChimp. Very easy, very inexpensive. This is uh, Doug Morris. Doug Morris uh, worked from, works with me and has been a good friend of mine for years. Uh, $140 million closed last year. Uh, just absolutely crushed it, 140 million. One of his techniques is he does his Morris Minute. He has 2,400 people in his database. They all get an email newsletter from him. Very simple, nothing complicated here. His team does it for him. And uh, he, yeah, so just the personalization there. But it looks, it looks fantastic, very simple. Then you go small every day. What is going small every day? Remember, we do one big thing and then these, the other things we do five times. So I'm gonna do a phone call or a text to people in my database. Could be one or the other or both. I could do personalized email or mail, mailings. Personalized email would be a personal email, not a blast. We did the blast in the email newsletter. Specific email to specific people in your database. And then networking. And networking is the secret weapon of the top producing agents in America. And I coached several of them. Secret weapon of top producing agents. Here, if your business is off, if your business is not where it should be and you feel like I need to ramp up quickly, the lowest cost, most effective thing you all could do is start meeting with three to five people in your database every single week. And here's what you say to them. You just say, it's been a long time since we broke bread. It's been a long time since we chatted. I love to get together. No agenda. What did I just say? No agenda. I'm not talking about real estate. I'm elevating relationships. And here's the key with this. I want you to remember this, that friends refer friends. And I'm going to share, you, share with you some ideas on networking here in a second. But friends refer friends. 
Oh, last thing I want to show you on these uh, bulk mailings, always look quickly. The concept one of my good friends, Renee Slon, does is what can happen to you is you might start to get referral resistance. What's referral resistance? You want referrals, you talk about referrals, but people aren't giving them to you. And you're like, why aren't people sending you referrals? One of the reasons is because people don't know that you are good enough to get a referral. That's a scary thought, but it's true because every single person in your database knows 12 other realtors. Guess who's winning the business? The person that appears to be more successful and appears to have the best expertise. If you are silent and you're a secret agent, they are not going to refer that business to you. They'll go with somebody that they trust that's actually showing them results. Renee puts out this quarterly and it shows off the results. Sold, 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 pended, listed, listed, sold. So people go, there's proof of life. She's actually out there in the market crushing it. Okay? So I'm going to turn on social media. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on social media, but a few tips here that I picked up from my top producers. First of all, realize that visibility is more important than ability. Visibility more important than ability. We all know an agent in your market that is a horrible person. <laughs> horrible human being. They're terrible to work with. They don't communicate. They're just combative with every transaction. You say, I never want to do another transaction. And then, of course, your buyers always go to their listings first. It's always you know, this kind of struggle. And here's the thing, though. They're super visible on social media. You can't go anywhere without seeing them. They're on Instagram. They're on Facebook. They're on TikTok. They're on YouTube. They're everywhere. You see their photos and everything going on. High visibility. They're terrible agents, yet they continue to crush it. Okay. Then, on the flip side, you've got, maybe it's you, but you know somebody that's a great realtor. Great communication skills. Fantastic human being. Gives back to the community. A pleasure to work with in transactions, and yet they can't feed their families. They're not closing enough transactions. Why aren't they closing enough transactions? Because they're invisible in the market. Because they're not visible. Visibility, more important in our day and age than ability. You follow that logic? So what do we need to do? Adopt at very least, some of you are beyond this, but for the ones that are not, you need to adopt at least a 5 2 strategy. This is like the baseline. Five posts a week, two videos, two stories. Minimum. If you're doing that already, double it up. Go to 10 4, 4. That's the minimum, minimum standard. Now, I'm going to give you three ideas really quickly on some great posts that I've seen from my own agents, my own coaching students. One is behind the scenes. Don't you? I, I always love watching like uh, the documentaries after watching a great series. You know, my wife and I watch Game of Thrones, and you always watch the documentaries that come after that or the little behind the scenes. It's a fun thing to do. So think about this when you're taking your next listing. When your stager comes in, do a behind the scenes. When your photographers are taking HD photos, do a behind the scenes. When your drone operators are doing behind the scenes, your photographer, you're doing photos or video of somebody doing photos or video, and it's okay because you're doing behind the scenes. And you share that as a video. It's fantastic. It's a tremendous amount of, of engagement. I'm going to give you a little spin on this really quickly. I'm going to get to the next two. But one idea that just, just came to me about the last couple of weeks, and people are just crushing with this, is lifestyle photos. Write that idea down. It's, it's a crusher. Lifestyle photos. So we all take listings that have nobody in the shot. And most MLSs don't allow you to have people in the shots, say actual physical human beings. But you, what you could do, and I would suggest you think about it, is have two sets of, of photos taken. One, no, nobody in the shot. A second set with a lifestyle shot. What does that mean? People interacting with the house as people would live in it. People on the deck, they're barbecuing. They're sitting by the fire in the backyard. Somebody's at the kitchen making a beautiful dinner. People sitting by the fireplace. Could be actors. You could have an actor. Could be the family. Got some people that love to be in the shop. Great. House looks fantastic, but people are interacting with the house as they would live in it. What you're selling is lifestyle. People will eat this up. I tell you, it's fantastic. Uh, second one is educational marketing. Go back in time. Go back 30 days. Think about all the posts you've done. Last 30 days, how many of them were educational posts where you're educating people about the market? Now, if you um, are educating people, people will look at you differently. They're going to look at you as the expert in the marketplace. If all your videos are just funny and kind of you know, ironic and that kind of thing, those are great. They get a lot of engagement too, but you want to position yourself as the S expert in the market. If you don't, you could have a, a real challenge because one of the other 12 realtors you're competing with in your database could take that position from you. So educational posts should be at least once a week of your group. At least once a week you're doing an educational post. And last, really quickly, opinions. Who are the highest paid people in your community? The highest paid people in your community are probably, in most communities, doctors, right? Attorneys and financial folks that give financial advice. Why are they so highly paid? They're so highly paid because they give their opinions. 
Don't be afraid to give your opinion. People want your opinion, and you will be much higher paid if you're willing to give it. Does that mean you're always going to be right? No. But people will eat it up. They want to know your opinion as the expert. You're positioning yourself as the expert, right, in the marketplace. Okay, so a, little, a couple things there to think about. I'm going to give you an example of something I put out recently. It was an educational uh, script. You can take a picture of this if you want. Um, and this is based on investment properties. It's a big change is happening with the investment property market right now. And I pointed it out in the educational piece right here. This is a video I shot. I said, as someone who owns investment properties, two new studies have been released recently that may have a direct impact on you, your holdings going forward. Uh, first, rent prices are falling. The median U the U.S. asking rent rose 1.7% year over year, the smallest increase in nearly two years. By the way, that's now gone negative. It's negative 0.4 this, this month. The March numbers just came in. It was 1.7, now it's negative. Rents are lower than they were a year ago at the same time. Uh, and keep in mind, rents were up 10 times that amount, 6 to 16.5% a year earlier. Second, apartment and multi multifamily housing construction up 620,000 units, just this one month. Every month, we're having rec new records broke on how many apartments are being built and constructed in our country. But why do I bring this to your attention I'm, I'm, when I'm doing the video? Today, cap rates are between 4 and 5%, that's my market. Uh, when investors sell their, their units, this provides owners with top dollars for their properties. It's likely that as the market changes and more importantly, rent interest rates rise, that these cap rates will rise to higher levels, pushing sales prices down significantly. If you're considering selling your holdings in the next six months to two years, highly encourage you to talk to a realtor. That was the script for the video that I put out. I put it out on TikTok. I had 25,000 views in uh, less than 24 hours. Now, some of these people are getting a lot more than me. I was very impressed with your social media panel. But uh, for me, that was a lot, right? And we got a lot of engagement on that. So you gotta think about how much of my video content is educational that I'm really putting out there uh, to, to capture attention. I wanna give you something else which I thought was a brilliant strategy, talking about social media. It's the Millionaire Blueprint. It comes from the head of marketing for Gary V. How many of you have heard of Gary V, right? Got Gary V out there. So he had this great, great story about this, and it was this, that most agents, including me, <laughs> Focus on the creative. We try to create great content, great video like I just showed you. And then you focus on targeting. You focus on the audience you're going after, right? That's what we all should do. But he adds a third leg to this, which I thought was important, which is the missing ele element is engagement. You see, the algorithms watch how many people like your video and how many people comment on your video. The more likes and comments, the algorithm goes, hey, wait a second, this is getting popular, people like it, I'm gonna push it out in front of a bigger audience, and a bigger audience, and a bigger audience. So what Gary Vee's team did is they said, hey, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the algorithm against itself. Every time we do something that we wanna get a lot of engagement on, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna share that ad with our personal audience. Think of you doing this yourself. You create an ad you're really proud of, you send it to your sphere of influence first, maybe by text or by email, and you say, hey guys, I just took out this little piece of educational content. I'd love to have you go make, do a comment on it, see what you think. Tell me your thoughts. Please comment, please like, please engage. They do it now, bingo, it starts to get wider recognition. And by the way, you comment on every comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Even the negative ones, you comment on it. It'll drive those numbers way, way up. I thought it was brilliant. Next is the things to do strategy, really quickly. For those of you that are maybe newer, or you don't have a database, you're like, Jim, how do I get this off the ground? This is a great strategy, really quickly. Um, this comes to me from a gal in the Midwest, one of my coaching students. She landed in this new community, husband got a job there, doesn't know a soul, but had been a realtor in another community. And she said, Jim, how do, I, how do I get myself off the ground here? What can I do? I said, well, go to TripAdvisor in your community and look at what TripAdvisor says is the funnest thing to do in your community, like the things to do if you're coming to that community. So she got a list of those 10 things. I said, now do a video, right? Create a community video around those 10 things. And you're just gonna mention casually that you're a realtor, and here's why you love living in this community, right? One of the reasons being this, and then you do another video. Then you take that video, and of course you're gonna post it on the natural places like YouTube and TikTok, but you're also gonna link it to your website, and if you have a blog on your website, your blog. And then when people start flowing onto your website, you're gonna use a tracking pixel. Hopefully you all know what a tracking pixel is. If you don't, go to YouTube and, and put in tracking pixel and you get educated and it take you about 20 minutes to learn it, it's super simple. Once that tracking pixel is there, what's happening now is that every single person that lands on my website, watches that video, gets a little pixel, that means I can now remarket to them. What this young lady did is she began to remarket to all these people that were watching these videos. Now she's a warm audience. She's already been, she's visit, uh, virtually met the people, right? And now they're seeing her all over. They're seeing her on 
on Google, there's being on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else that she is. Guess what happened with her business? She went from zero to 10 million in 12 months as a result of doing this strategy. Very little cost, by the way. So very, very effective. I want to show you this guy, Alex Aronson. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time talking about, I wish, about him, but I wish I could. Alex came to my office, it was probably seven years ago. He was a graduate of college, and uh, his dad was in real estate, but he was, didn't want to work where his dad was. His dad's from Texas, and he said, I want to come to Oregon where he went to school, I'm going to stay here. And he knew we were the biggest company in town. He knocked on my door and he said, Jim, I want to be an intern for your company, unpaid. I said, Alex, you don't do interns here, buddy. I, I'm sorry, we got a full house, we can't use you, thank you comes back the next month, asked for the internship. The next month, the next month, the next month, for six months straight, he came back asking for internships. Finally, I broke down and said, Alex, you are so tenacious. I'm gonna make you an intern here. First intern we've ever had. I'm gonna make you an intern. Unpaid, not gonna get paid. He's no problem. Comes in and he interns for us for six months, working unpaid. I started feeling so guilty seeing him work, working there. I finally said, okay. <laughs> John the payroll out. So he works for us for a year. Then he graduates, get, gets his uh, actual real estate license, goes to work for a, one of our agents as an assistant. Finally, he breaks off on his own. Now he's in the top 1% of realtors nationwide. One of, just one of his strategies, by the way, young guy, this guy's in his early 20s. One of his great strategies, he does a six step social media blitz, which I want to share with you. Every time you take a listing, it gives you at least six opportunities to market that online. So here's where we're gonna go with this. Coming soon, he does a quick coming soon raw no edit video. This is not your professionally edited video, that will come later, but the raw no edit video. He's gonna walk around the house and say, hey guys, you can see him, this is exactly one in the background. He has beanie on and sunglasses. This isn't professional, he's just walking around. Hey, check this new listing, guys, I just wanna share it with you. You know, insider information, kind of behind the scenes. Uh, then he does a listing launch. His listing launch is where he launches it onto the market. Now I'm gonna tell you this quick, quick concept which is a game changer if you really listen to what I'm saying. Most realtors, when they take a listing, they just take the listing on Tuesday and it goes into MLS on Wednesday or Tuesday night. They take a listing on Wednesday, it goes in the morning on Wednesday night or the afternoon on Wednesday. What's the best day of the week to, 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 to launch a listing on the market statistically? Does anybody know? The answer is Thursday. What time of day? 5 p.m. Thursday at 5 p.m. is the number one time to list, launch a list to get to the market. This isn't my study, this is a study that was done by Adam Research. They studied tens of thousands of sales over a decade. You'll get more money, you'll get more attention if your listings launched on Thursday at 5. So what he says to sellers, when they sit down to list the property, is, hey guys, we could get your house on the market tonight, but I'd rather launch it on Thursday, listing launch, uh, at 5 p.m. And here's what I'd like to do with your permission. What I'd like to say in the MLS remarks is that the yeah, showings will start to occur on Saturdays and Saturday and Sunday, but we're going to do an open house Friday from 4 to 6. Uh, and brokers are invited to come to the open house, but no showings until Saturday and Sunday. We're going to review offers on Monday and respond to all offers on Tuesday. What are you setting up the market to think? They're going to think, this, there's a sh this is like, I better get on this. I better do something with this really rapidly or I'm going to lose this opportunity. By the way, no showings on Friday until when? The open house. When are going to people see this hit their their, their inbox because all of your buyers, 95 percent of them, have, are signed up on a portal. It's going to come in. And it's going to be like, oh, there's a listing I want to see. Ah, darn, I can't see it until Saturday and Sunday. Oh, there's a Friday open house. How much activity do you think you get at that Friday open house? A ton, a ton. So that's part of that listing launch strategy. That strategy alone is worth a million bucks. It's a great strategy. Open house on Facebook, not just on your feed. You're going to do an open house Facebook event, of course, right? A public event that people can see if they're looking for things to do. Then open house live video while he's at the open house. Hey, guys, I'm here. And then the two things that most realtors are absolutely getting wrong, and I'm sure a lot of us are guilty of it. I was guilty of it before. Does a pending and a sold post, which we all do, but he does it a different way. The pending post looks like this. The pending post tells the marketing story. If you don't take a note, take that note. <laughs> tells the marketing story, and what do we mean by that? That means that when you're doing that post, you're gonna say, I'm so excited for my clients. We got this property uh, in contract in only 10 days. Uh, we use my, my marketing engine, let's call it a marketing engine, not a marketing plan. Put it in my marketing engine, and we got uh, 25 showings. We got 50 virtual showings. We got three offers. We counted two and we got one accepted offer for over full price. What am I doing? I'm telling the marketing story. When you have a marketing success, tell the story. When my friends Ben Hoff, or Bill Hoff, excuse me, up in Portland, Oregon, had a great marketing post. He had his table, his closing table, 
13 offers on one property. He lines them all up on the closing table, and then he has his buyer seller plan at the end, and he says, my seller just accepted an offer, a, a one of 13 we received this weekend. By the way, Zillow said the home was worth 469. We listed it for 475, and I got 500,000 for it. Beautiful marketing story. See the difference? The sold story is a little different. You're gonna tell the client story. You say, I'm so excited for my clients. They're moving on to be closer to their grandkids. They own the house for 25 years. They did a ton of improvements and we're so happy to help them get moved. You see the difference in how we're approaching it? Telling stories makes a difference. People will read those stories, they'll engage with those stories. It makes a big difference. Okay, hospitality mindset. Keep this in mind. With real estate and really all business, service is what I do for them. Hospitality is how I make them feel. Write that down. Hospitality is how I make them feel. It's a great story I just saw. And it was about a restaurateur in uh, New York City. And this uh, group of people came to see his restaurant, his beautiful restaurant, and wanted to have a, 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 their foodies. They wanted to have like a five-star meal. So they went there for lunch, and they had an incredible lunch. They were raving about it. The restaurateur was standing in the back, and you could hear them talking. But one of the people at the table says, you know what we didn't do on this trip, guys, that I really wanted to do? I wanted to have a New York-style hot dog. Restaurateur hears this. What does he do? He runs out of the back door, goes across the street to a hot dog guy, gets four hot dogs, brings them back to his chef. He says, now cut these up and make them look like super fantastic. They cut them up on a table, they put a little swoosh of ketchup, a little swoosh of mustard, a little swoosh of relish to make it look fancy. They bring it out to the table, got his four meter days, they all lift the lids and they said, back to your hot dogs. What do you think that those clients thought of that experience? They lift, they loved it. That's a hospitality mindset. I want you to ask yourself, how am I creating a hospitality mindset with my own clients? I'm going to give you some ideas, and what you're really thinking about here is wow moments. How am I going to wow my clients during the process? Because wow, wow clients come back and refer you. So I'm going to give you some really practical, tactical ideas right now. Number one, pre-meeting questionnaires. All of us have probably gone to the doctor this year at some point, and if you went to a new doctor, what do they do? They said, hey, by the way, we're going to text you a little questionnaire to fill out. If you don't fill it out, when you get here, you should get here 15 minutes early because you're going to have to fill it out. Everybody have that conversation this year? Almost all. It's like super common conversation now. How many times are realtors using a pre-meeting questionnaire? I'll tell you what, it's zero, except for a few of you. Just raise your hand. <laughs> Congratulations. I saw that in the back. Good job. <laughs> so if you're not using a pre-meeting questionnaire, here's how to elevate yourself above every other realtor in the community. You're going to take yourself above everybody. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to say, hey, guys, I want to do the best job possible for you. I'm going to send you a little pre-meeting questionnaire. It's just going to ask you four or five questions to help me define what you're looking for in a realtor and how I can help you best. Do you mind filling that out for me? You shoot at them, and you're going to use either Jot Forms. Jot Forms is free. You use Jot Forms. Or you use Google Forms. That's also free. So just use one or the other. Uh, Jot Forms is great because it's got some really cool functionality in there. But within that as well, you can put an embedded video. You can actually have a little video that says, hey, I'm looking for so forward to meeting with you. Here's what we're going to cover during our first meeting. You just give me five minutes and fill this little form out. Really help me out. Thank you so much. Now, some people are still not going to do it. That's OK. It's not about that. It's about elevating what? It's about elevating your service level to a wow moment. They're going to be like, oh, that's pretty cool. This guy's on it. Okay. Uh, second one, marketing plan with off-menu items. How many of us have a marketing plan or marketing engine that's in writing? Not just walking in and talking to people, good job. Not just walking in and talking to people, but actually having something in writing that's like, hey, here's all the 50 things I'm gonna do for you when I list the house. You just actually put it in writing, so it's really, really in-depth. This is what we created for our coaching uh, students, because they, they were asking, how can you do this? Help me out, Jim. So we put together a whole list for them of things that they could put in front of the seller to wow the client. Remember, you want to make sure that they're impressed. And even though you might walk into a lot of listing presentations and be like, this is a slam dunk, I don't need to do this because I got the listing. This is a referred client. I don't need to go through this rigging around. Remember, when you are interviewing for that listing, even though it's a slam dunk, you're really interviewing for the referral. You want to wow them so much that they refer their friends and family. If you just go in there and phone it in, they might not give you the referral. You can't do that. You can't phone it in. A buyer and seller video drips. Drip campaigns standard for the top producers in the country. If you don't have drips going on, you gotta build drips in your CRM, right? Everybody should use your CRM, everybody should use using drips, but the new level of drips is not the old fashioned canned drip that some $16 an hour kid wrote in New York that doesn't know a thing about real estate and we're just adopted it. We're not using canned drips. First step is I'm gonna rewrite all those, number one, in my own voice, that's unique to me with my unique marketing message, and or I'm going to transfer it, and I'm going to start using video drips. I highly recommend 
you set a goal right now and you say, I'm gonna create a 10-step buyer video drip. And I'm gonna create a 10-step seller video drip so that when I start talking to a potential buyer, I'm gonna set them up in my CRM, I'm gonna click the little box that says start the video drip, and now they're gonna get a video drip from me every week for the next 10 weeks. Same thing with sellers, new seller comes in. By the way, when I create that video, I can use that in multiple ways. I can take that same video and push it on social media. I can put it on my YouTube channel. I can send it out to my email as a part of my email newsletter. So it's not just one use, it's multiple uses. And because it's evergreen, I can use it forever, right? And then gamification, having come up fun with clients. Think about how you can gamify the process with your clients. I'm gonna give you a quick example that I used for years, and it's gonna sound simple, but it was very effective for me, is when I would take clients out as buyers, as a buyer agent, I would give them a clipboard and a white piece of paper, and I'd say, put a line down it vertically and horizontally, and we're gonna play a little game. The kids can play too, guys. You guys can play too. So when we're driving around and we look at each of these properties, you're gonna write down the pros and cons, what you like about that property and what you don't like. Even if you're not really in love with the property, this is gonna help me get better at finding you your dream home. So every property, we're gonna do a little pros and cons. Five things you like, five things you don't like, okay? And then when I get to property two, we're gonna do it again, and then you're gonna decide between property one and property two, if you had to buy one, which one would you buy? Which one would you totally reject? I'd reject number one. And then we go through the process. Throughout the day, I'm gonna get it down and narrow it down to one property. That's one piece of simple, simple, simple gamification. You wanna raise your game really quickly, set that goal of three to five networking meetings every single week. Your business will absolutely explode the next 30 days, I guarantee it. But here's what I want you to go beyond that. I want you to think, think about your top 10 clients, the ones that have sent you referrals and done direct business with you over the past, let's say, two years. That's those people that are going to be at the top of this list, the people you really want to meet with, okay? Now, here's the question for all of you. Those top 10 people, the people that have referred you, done business with you, do you know their aspirational goals for 2023? What do I mean by aspirational goals? I mean their business goals. I mean their personal goals. I mean their educational goals. What do they want to get done? Maybe they want to open a bakery. Maybe they want to go to Hawaii. Maybe they want to get their kid out of their house. I mean, there's a million things that could be going through their head. But you, as a realtor, don't look at that often because we're just focused on getting a referral out of them. We've got to erase that mindset. Here's our jobs. Our jobs with our database is to get these folks thinking of you in a different way. And I will tell you, in coaching some of the most successful agents in America, that this is how you do it. When I talk to my agent group that are at the top of their game, when they say they just listed a house, they say I just listed my buddy's house. When they sell a property, they say I just sold my friend's house. You know why? Because they treat these clients as what? Friends. And friends are for friends. If you are not getting as many referrals as you think you should be getting on your database, it's probably because those people don't look at you as what? Friend. You haven't reached the elevation of friendship. And until you do, your database will always underperform. Perform. You look at Garrett, I guarantee those people look at him as a friend. Would you agree? That's a friendship relationship. You gotta say, I gotta take it from down here and I gotta bubble that up. I gotta have these client meetings and it's gotta be about them, not me. So when I hear what they want to do aspirationally, I say, what's your big goals? What's your big plans for this year? What are you trying to get done? Where do you wanna go on vacation next? You know, figure it out and I figure it out. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take that back to my database, my CRM that I'm using religiously every single day it's up on my computer. I'm gonna put that in, and now I know what their goals are, and I'm gonna set a goal within the next seven days after that meeting, I'm gonna find a way to help them with that goal they've set for themselves. They wanna open a bakery, maybe I'll go down to the bookstore and buy them a, a book about bakeries and open a bakery. They wanna go to Hawaii, I'll recommend a great restaurant in Hawaii. Send them the link. I'm gonna find a way to add value to this relationship that has nothing at all to do with real estate. You see the power of that? because I'm elevating relationships to friendships. That's what friends do with friends. The real estate, real estate will come secondly. You know why it will come secondly? Because they're gonna also be being touched eventually to your big stuff you're doing. You're going big and you're going small. You're doing those asks, asks all the time in other ways. And then you'll impl employ the most powerful power in the universe, which is the power of reciprocity. When you begin helping people with their goals, what do they start doing for you? They're gonna naturally start to help you. And this is where these referrals will start to flow at a high level. And I want you to take this one step further, really quickly, and I want you to say to yourself, how many referrals you, that you sent out this week, how many referrals have you sent out? That you sent out to a plumber, an electrician, you sent out to a carpenter, you sent out to a gardener. How many referrals did you send this week? Did you send one? Did you send two? Did you send three? Did you send five? Now I want you to match that up with how many referrals you want to begin receiving. Do you want to receive two referrals a week? Do you want to receive five referrals a week? If you want to begin receiving, what do you need to start doing? 
You gotta start giving. You gotta lead with other people's needs, and when you do, great things will come back to you. But you gotta get really hyper conscious about this. I'm gonna help as many people as I possibly can next week. I wake up, and that's the position that I'm in. I'm gonna help my friends become as successful as possible. Quick, a uh, couple of things, kind of tagging off with a lot of conversations today, but I think these are great strategies. A 20 methods of day strategy. Very, very simple, I'm gonna be scrolling, as we all do this anyway, every morning when I wake up, I'm, I'm having coffee, I'm scrolling Instagram and Facebook, and you probably are too, drinking your coffee. But I'm gonna do it with purpose. When I do it with purpose, I'm looking for life change. Somebody's having a baby, somebody's getting married, somebody's getting divorced, somebody has a kid going to college, somebody's opening a new business, going on vacation, went to a great restaurant, you figure it out, something exciting, fun, different happened to these people. I'm gonna do something else too. Don't just look in your feed. Here's the big mistake that most of you are making is that you're just relying on the algorithm to put people in front of you. But how many people have the experience of only seeing the same 25 people every day? It's the same 25 people. Every, you're like, what is happening to me? Why are the same people in my feed? I'm sick of looking at these people. And you have 500 friends, but it's the same 25 people. Because you've engaged with them at some level, and the algorithm just says, these are the people they like, so I'm put these people in front of them. You have to outsync and outsmart the algorithm, and here's how you do it. You go to your profile, and you go to your friends list. Not the feed, but the friends list. And you go from A, you go to Z. You start at A, you click A. That's my one for 20 today. Two, I'm gonna go to the list. I'm gonna start to open up their profiles, look at their feeds, and I'm gonna find something that is unique that they've just done, that vacation, something happening, something interesting, something exciting. Then I send them a direct message, just asking them about their experience. Hey, I see you went to a, that cool restaurant recently. How'd that go? Hey, I see your son just graduated. Congratulations. You find a way to have a conversation. Am I talking about real estate? No. I am acting as a friend. The algorithm will pick it up, and those, those friends will miraculously start to show up in your feed again because it recognizes the engagement. If you don't do this, guys, by the way, if you don't do it religiously, what happens is the posts that you make, every post that you do will only be seen by 4 to 6%, 4 to 6% of your overall audience. So if you want a wider distribution of your content that you're putting out, you also have to do this strategy. Quick uh, little spin on this, my friend Sarah Jo Robbins works with me. Uh, she does it in a little bit of a different way. Uh, she does 5 to 10 videos every single day. She has a ring, ring, ring light, uses the phone, pushes out video, doing the same exact thing. 10 to 20 seconds each, she remembers it on social, looks for something that they've done interesting, and puts it out, there she is, she did one to me, and I just took a little copy picture of it. Simple thing, five to 10 videos a day. I wanna hit you with blend. This is a beautiful idea from my friend, Janet McNown, top producing realtor in Bend, Oregon. Um, so Janet was a great agent, worked for me for years, top producing, top 1% agent, and she moved to Bend, didn't know a soul in Bend. She's like, how am I gonna build my business? You know, how am I gonna make this work? She knew about 20 people, she got this idea. I'm gonna create a closed Facebook group just for people that I already know, which was about 20 people. And I'm gonna say to these 20 people, every four to six weeks, I'm gonna host an event at a local place, brewery, winery, bakery, something fun, could be music, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and pay for the first round of drinks, and I'm gonna pay for the appetizers. And here's the thing, I'm gonna invite you, only thing I ask from you is that you bring a plus one. I'm just gonna ask you to bring a plus one. Now what's happened now, the 20 people she started with grew it immediately to what? 40. And the next time she did it, what did it grow to? 40 to 80. And you can see how fast this would grow so quickly and how successful she became from just as a result of this simple strategy. Any cold calling there? No. Really simple, organic. And by the way, the people that uh, are in these clusters are people that she already liked because she knew she liked the first 20. And those people generally like people that you like, generally, not always, but most of the time. And so she's got this really good group of people that are really kind of in her same space that she wants to work in. Just a beautiful idea. I just thought it was brilliant. Um, so, oh, there she is with her husband. So at one of the events. Okay, quickly, marketing your marketing. I just want to touch on this for a second. For those of you that uh, have had a success and you've had this amazing success with a listing in the last six months, last year, last 12 months, I want you to think about, am I marketing my marketing? And I'm gonna give you an example of this. My wife and I got married about five years ago and we had a wedding planner and we interviewed wedding planners. So we had these wedding planners pitching us. It's very similar to a listing presentation. It's really interesting actually. So, and they would come and it was just like a photographer and it was just like an architect. They'd come in and they'd have what I call a success portfolio, a portfolio of all the work they've done. I'm like, ooh, that's really cool, that's really neat. And really what they were showing us was this. They were marketing their marketing. And I thought to myself, this is a better way for realtors to go about a listing presentation. 
just coming into the listing presentation, you can still have your listing presentation if you want, but having a success portfolio where you're showing off, hey, listen, here's what I've done for some other clients. I sold this house, and here's the marketing that we did, the social media, the, the videography, the photography, the listing description, here's a testimonial from the client. What if I had a booklet of those? Wouldn't that be amazing? What if I took that same booklet, quote unquote, I build, maybe in Canva, and I take that and I build it into a PDF and then I load it, write this down because you're going to want to remember this, and it's not on these slides, and you load it up to flip HTML5. Write that down, flip, F-L-I-P, HTML5.com. That will turn that PDF and any PDF into a magazine. Like, and it turns and it has the sound of a magazine. It's so beautiful, I love it. And then it will give you a URL for that. That URL could be then sent to clients. It could be sent as a follow-up. It could be sent before you come to the, to the meeting. I think it's a brilliant idea, and that's marketing your marketing, creating a success portfolio, which I think is a really smart idea. If you're not doing this, you missed the boat, CMA based strategy. Uh, one of my good friends that I worked with, Shelly and Dave Culbertson, they have a team and they crush it. Uh, when they told me about this idea, they had 15 deals in escrow. 13 of the deals came from this strategy. And I know that some of you probably heard the strategy, but for those of you who haven't implemented it, you should implement it. It's simply this. You just go to your database every day and you pick one person that's a homeowner and you do an unsolicited CMA. They didn't ask for one, you just said they're going to do one. Okay? This will take you 20, 30 minutes. You can use you know, Cloud CMA, it's a great system. We use NARRPR.com, free to all realtors, by the way. NARRPR, create a page report in about five minutes. So I do the CMA, then I record myself just talking about it. I can do this on BombBomb, or if, you're not, if you don't want to use BombBomb, you can use Loom, L-O-O-M.com, which is a great platform as well, where I'm just gonna record myself and say, hey guys, with the market changes, everything going on in the market, a lot of people are asking you about their home value. I just am gonna update all my clients on their home values. Here's where your home looks like it's at at the moment. You know, I haven't been out to your house recently. If you want me to narrow this down and really get it more accurate, I can start to come out and check out if you've made some improvements. But here's what it's looking like for your home bag. It looks like you're doing pretty well. And then you go through the report, right? And then you send it to them. Now, here's what's beautiful if you use BombBomb. If you use BombBomb, you can set up BombBomb so it'll, it'll send some triggers to you. So when people open it, it'll, it'll send an email back to you and say, hey, they opened it. They watched the video, send an email back and say, hey, they actually watched the video. Third, which is the most important thing, is it will send you a notice if they open the video again. So this is important. Imagine six months goes by, they don't say anything. They just say, hey, thank you so much for not interested in selling. Six months go by and you get an alert. These people open their video again. What does that signal to you guys? They're thinking about selling. They're circling back to the idea. Now gives you a reason to prompt call them, right? It's a beautiful, great strategy. Absolutely, 100% absolutely crushes. I want you guys to pick a number between one and 10 right now. Go ahead and do it. No, no, no. It's to yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Just, just a, I like seven, though. Seven is a good number. <laughs> and we're going to do a little strategy here together. So get out your phone. Everybody get out your phone. You got a number between one and seven. I want you to go to your contacts. Go to your contacts on your phone. And once you get to your contacts, I want you to scroll the number you said. Was it one, two, three, something said seven? Go four, five, six. Just quick scroll. Land on the page you got to. And I want you to look and see if, if, if you know those people, first of all, hopefully you do, because they're in your phone. <laughs> but secondly, if there's a homeowner in that list. If there's not a homeowner, just scroll again until you get to a homeowner. When you get to a homeowner, I'm gonna challenge you guys sitting in the audience to send them this text right now. Ready? It says, you can say good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, hope you're doing well. You can change it to your voice if you want. Hope you're doing well. This week I'm finishing up your annual equity assessment on your property. Would you like me to send you a copy? Notice I'm not asking for permission to do it, because <laughs> I'm doing it anyway. I'm just asking for permission to send it to them. I challenge you guys to do this right now with that person you landed on. And if one of you gets a hit back that says yes, you know, yell it out, because that'll be fun to see it live. But I guarantee you, I just had one of my, my uh, friends do this, Russ Manzone, who I work with. Russ sent out seven of these texts and got five yes responses back. Absolutely incredible. Within an hour, I mean, it was absolutely bananas. So, and this is a huge value point. Clients really appreciate when you keep them up to speed on their home values. You may say, well, people didn't reach out to me. If they still are curious about their home value, that's a reason to make contact. It's a reason to show up, which we're capable of giving you, right? I'm gonna give you the golden circle strategy. Now, my wife and I, a couple years ago, went to Napa. Anybody, anybody been to Napa, California? Have you been to Napa? Beautiful area. So we want wine tasting there. And so before we went to Napa, um, of course, we were telling everybody we're going to Napa. One of those people, yeah, oh, we're going to Napa, you know. And then when we're in Napa, what are we doing? We're taking pictures, you know, typical. Here's a picture of the winery, you know, all that stuff. You know, typical what you do. 
And then when we got back from Napa, what did we do? We told everybody about our trip to Napa. So just like every human being, when they're going through an experience in today's world, they're pretty much documented on social media and talking about it with their friends and family. But here's what's interesting. The same thing happens for people that are entering into a real estate transaction. Even on the buyer or seller side, doesn't matter. Same thing happens. And you can take advantage of what I call the golden circle. The golden circle is this, that you're four times more likely to receive a referral during this period of time than any other time of a relationship with these people. Four times more likely to get the referral. And you're going to say, Jim, how do I implement this? You understand, you have the lead up. That's the first circle. Okay? That's on the way to, to doing something, either thinking about buying or thinking about selling. The euphoric moments when they have a great experience, we're in a restaurant, we just have an amazing meal, and we see it come out and take a picture, we take a bite, it's great, great glass of wine. Then the next one is the last impression. By the way, the last impression, guys, get this through your head, is way more important than the first impression. Because they will forget the first impression if they have a bad last impression. Would you agree? You gotta nail the last impression, 100%. So if you have a great last impression, they're gonna tell, about it, tell everybody about it. Let me give you some scripting for this really quickly. Because you're like, yeah, that, that makes sense logically, but how do I actually do this? What, what do you mean by this? And so here's a script for you. You can say, and this is in the lead up, hey, now that you're in the market, do you find yourself talking real estate with your friends and family? That's a natural conversation. Do you find yourself talking friends with your friends and family about it? If you spark any interest, I'm always here to help. I work almost entirely with referred clients. I find that nice people generally have nice friends. Isn't that true? I gotta ask, I want you to write this down. If you're, not, if you're taking note, write this down. I've gotta ask for generosity. I've gotta ask for generosity. People are generous by nature, but you gotta ask for it. I'm gonna tell you a little story about that in a second. Here's the second one, now we're in the euphoric moment. Congratulations, we got your offer accepted. We got, you know, your home pending, whatever it's, buyer or seller. Hey, you should go out and celebrate. Now, if you'd like to share this, I have a link to the listing I can send over that shows you're now pending. Feel free to share it with friends and family. And if they're inspired to follow your lead, I would love your referral. Giving them some value, giving them that, that link I talked about earlier. But also, I'm asking for the referral, I'm asking for generosity. Last one is, the last question. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you in this transaction. If you feel good about the service you've received, I'd love to review your recommendation. Uh, I'll send you a link over a text in a day or so. Oh, by the way, I have a closing gift for you. Now, I never give people, my personal opinion, I don't give people that link the same day it closes. Because they're overwhelmed. They're never going to get to it. They're going to forget it. It's not going to happen. So I always just talk about the fact that I want the re review or recommendation. And then I come back and I give that link to them like a day or two later. Okay? If you have a team, you should be doing. And if they still don't do it, I'd send them an email like seven days later. I have a free 730 process. Okay? So euphoric moments, that's a last impression, I should say. Um, and when we look at this, uh, this concept, here's something else we need to remember, is that when we do receive referrals, we have to follow up. This is so important, we have to follow up. I met with a top team in my office, and I said, let's talk about your business, and we talked about their business. And I said, what do you do when you receive a referral? And they said, well, we send over a, a box of brownies you get from a local bakery. And I said, well, that's nice, that's personalized, that's cool. Uh, what else do you do? Nothing. <laughs> that was it. But if I was going to ask all of you guys, when you receive a referral, what do you do? What's your process and do you have a set process? If you do not have a set process, here's a simple one to adopt. Very simple and fantastic. It really works. This is, comes from the ninja program. Any ninjas in the room? Beautiful. Love it. I've done ninja twice. I've had my office do it. It's a great system. So referral follow-up really quickly. Number one, of course, I'm gonna send a thank you card for the referral. Somebody sends me a referral, I'm of course I'm gonna handwrite, not a generic, I'm gonna handwrite a thank you card. Of course I'm gonna do that, right? Now, I'm also gonna thank them by phone after probably I made that, uh, that send out that card, I'm gonna thank them by phone. I'm also gonna confirm initial contact. Once I've made contact with the seller or buyer, they refer to and say, hey, I wanna let you know, I was able to get a hold of Bob, and they sound like really nice people, I just wanna thank you again. Thank you so much for that referral because I want them to know that I'm taking care of it, that this isn't getting lost, I just didn't drop the ball, I'm following through with this, right? I'm gonna give you a progress report during the transaction. Hey, we got some good news, we got Nestra, wanna thank you again, we're getting there, it's, it's happening, okay? I'm gonna give them a, it could be a text, that's not too long. I'm gonna give them a report when we get to closing, hey, we just closed the transaction, thank you again. And then I'm gonna send a thank you and a payment. The thank you, by the way, comes at the beginning, and the payment comes at the end. What do I mean by that? I'm gonna give every single person who sends me a referral a personalized gift, not the same thing every time, personalized to the client, the best way I know them. And that gift in my world is $25 to $50 gift, just for the referral, regardless of whether it closes or not. 
Okay, 25 to 50 bucks, that's all I'm spending. When we get to closing, I'm gonna do probably a $100 level to $200 level gift. That's my level. And what do you think happens with that? I am now conditioning them to send the referrals. When you reward a referral, you get 24% more referrals. That's the statistics. When you do not reward referrals, you don't get that number. Somebody else gets that referral. So simple, but very, very effective, okay? Um, most likely sellers for 2023, you guys gotta keep me on track for timing, I don't wanna go over it for you. I know you've been here a long time. Uh, most likely sellers for 2023, a recent study, we got five minutes, I think. <laughs> 5.7 million Americans have a probability of being listed on the market. They won't all list, but 5.7 have raised their hand and said they plan to sell in the next 12 months. That's a lot. Remember, we only have 900,000 listings on the market today. So there's a lot of pent up demand there, right? Of those listings, it's estimated the highest number will come from homeowners, 45 to 64 years old, 10%. Keep that in mind. Like that's the, that's my age, really. I'm, I'm 53, so that's like Gen X. That Gen Xs are listing the houses, right? And then you have the empty nesters and single adults, 35 to 64, retirees age 65 and up, and families with a uh, dependent age 18 to 24 year old living at home. Why do I bring this up? I just wanna get you thinking about this for a second. Why would you sell your home? What if I told you, and this is a social media post, social post really quickly. Why would you sell your home right now? Why would you sell your home? What if I told you now is the best time to sell your home in the last several years? Here's why. And I'm going to give you three reasons why. Number one, and this number just got changed. The new numbers just came out yesterday or day before yesterday. Less competition. Today there are 25% fewer new listings in the market than last spring. Okay, so less competition. For the sellers that do come to market, 47% of pending listings attract an acceptable offer within the first two weeks. Listings are selling. This, there, there's a big dis disconnect between the perception of the market and the actual market. And last is on average, sellers are receiving 98.7% of list price and 27% of sellers are selling for over full price, guys. That's the messages we gotta put, be putting out because the, the general public doesn't know those numbers. And we can localize those, those are national numbers if you want to. But it still doesn't answer the question, why would somebody specifically sell? Really quickly, my wife and I sold our home about a year ago. Now, we were in a position of kind of getting ready to sell for about six months. And I want to talk to you about what's under the surface. We have the listings that are at market, right? Those are on the surface listings that are at market. But there is a giant group of people that are under the surface, that are waiting for the market to change or don't know it's the time to come on the market. And I'm going to tell you why that's important. Because if the realtor called me and said, Jim, listen, I know you're not ready to go on the market, or maybe you're not ready to go on the market. But would you still sell if I was able to get you a, a solid price? In the six months leading up to me actually pulling the trigger and listing it, I would have absolutely said yes to that question. I know you don't want to list your house quite yet, but would you sell for the right price? I would have said yes to it. See, here's what we got to get to. We got to understand there's a tremendous amount of listings out there that are available to get. We just got to start working with these sellers. Even if they're not ready to pull the trigger yet, we got to create relationships. Now, why would people sell? Here's the actual numbers. They want to move closer to the level in 21% of the time. Uh, they're moving due to retirement 11%. A neighbor has become less desirable, 11%. Homes too small or changes in structure of household. Now, like you, I get stuff from realtors all the time in my house, right? In the mail, you get postcards. Yes, you get door hangers, right? You get cold calls. You get all kinds of stuff coming to you. And when you get those realtor marketing stuff, what does it all say? 99% of it says, do you want to sell your house? Call me. You want to know what your home's worth? Call me. That's the top two things that you're going to get from a realtor. Now, everything works, so if you're not doing anything, doing that is gonna work, it's gonna get some level of result. But if you wanna go 5X results on your mailings, abandon that strategy and go with the strategy that I've already talked about right now, just for a minute. The strategy is focusing on the client's why, not your why. They don't, you know, it's not about you getting a listing, it's about why they may wanna sell. So what if you said, hey, postcard says, do you wanna move closer to your loved ones? That's the headline. You wanna move closer to your loved ones? What's the number one reason why people sell? They want to move closer to loved ones. Why wouldn't I focus my postcard, my marketing around the number one reason why people sell? What's the next one? Hey, are you, are you going to be retiring soon? Have you considered moving uh, after that, right? Neighborhood has become less desirable, right? How do, you, how do you like living in your neighborhood? Is it time for a change? Think about the whys, right? Important. Uh, home's too small. Have you outgrown your home? Have you outgrown your home? Question mark. Now, if you're farming a specific neighborhood, could I do all five of those over the course of six months or a year, once a month? I hit all the questions. Every possible reason somebody may be considering selling, I can hit them all. Does that make sense? So guys, I, can't, I could go on for days and days, but my time is wrapping up here. How many people would like a copy of this entire presentation? 
even with all the slides I didn't get to. I'm going to give, give you a copy of that. Look at all this stuff. Here we go. Download a free copy of the presentation. There is your QR code to do that. By the way, uh, my website, if you can't read that QR code, it's difficult for you. My website is e, like an elephant, erealestatecoach.com. erealestatecoach.com. When you get there, the link to this outline is right at the top today. And I also want to give you something else. I'm going to give you, if you're interested uh, in my coaching, I'm going to give you 30 days of my coaching for $1. Does that sound like a bargain? $1 coaching for 30 days. Here's what it includes. We give you live coaching, like the one you got today, three times a week, live coaching. We give you 20 straight weeks of me working with you one-on-one -on -one every single day for 20 weeks on lead generation. We have hundreds and hundreds of downloads for you to take. Systems and forms are included in there. We've got all kinds of checklists for you to work from. It's really, really powerful uh, coaching, all for a dollar uh, for the first month. And after that, it's only about the cost of a cup of coffee a day. It's very expensive coaching compared to most coaches in the country. And we just added this, which I'm super, super proud of, which is we have a social media director at my coaching company. And I know one of the biggest challenges a lot of you sitting here have is social media and getting social media content out. We are now giving our agents in our coaching program 15 to 20 uh, beautiful, beautiful social media posts every single month. And we're also loading it up with uh, a bunch of different captions you can use. All Canva friendly for those of you that use Canva. You can go right into Canva, you can totally personalize it and make it your own. It's really incredible. And for those of you that join it as well, we're giving you access to Sisu. If you've never heard of Sisu, we don't have time to talk about it, but it's one of the most powerful accountability programs in the country. So it's really going to help you stay on track with your goals. You put your goals in and you track what you're doing every day. It will unveil how well you're doing or not doing with your business. It's really powerful. I highly recommend Sisu. Even if you don't use my coaching, you should check out Sisu, but you get it free with me. There's a dollar for your first 30 days. This is the only place you'll see this. It's not on my website. So if you're interested in doing this, I highly recommend you come up and grab that uh, QR code. I'll give it to you again at the end. Last thing I just want to mention too, I'll give it to you again, don't worry, is brokerage coaching. For any of you that are brokerage owners uh, and you're looking for coaching, I do brokerage coaching. It's something I'm super passionate about. I love helping brokerage owners crush it in the market. We focus on recruiting and retention, building systems, staff, culture. Uh, unlimited question and answer sessions with me, and we give you two coaching sessions every single month, and every single one of your agents for your company, regardless if you have one agent or a thousand agents, gets full access to my coaching. So you get your whole training on figured out there too. If you're interested in that, there's a QR code for that, and here's a QR code for all three of those things if you miss one of those. Thank you so much, it's been an absolute pleasure.